Hi again, everyone. So welcome to um, lesson two of digital drawing. Um, this week, we're going to uh, recap some of the basic uh, tools that we uh, looked at last week. Um, so we'll be looking at um, the draw tools um, that we looked at, which is polyline um, and line tools. Um, and then we'll be looking at using some of the modify tools as well, uh, using um, copy, uh, move, um, mirror, trim, um, basic principle tools of AutoCAD um, in order to draw a very simple plan um, uh, and to hopefully practice the tools that we um, worked on last week. Um, so we're on lesson two um, at the moment. So we'll be recapping um, the principal tools from week one um, and using those to create a very simple um, plan. We will be um, creating a plan that looks something like this um, uh, using um, the, the basic tools that I've just mentioned um, and the hope is that um, being able to draw a simple plan like this will give us an opportunity to practice the, um, the, the, the functions that we have um, recently learned and hopefully start us um, on the journey to using um, AutoCAD uh, properly. And now we're going to start drawing um, uh, this, which I'm calling a very simple plan. And we have, you can see, there's two rooms. These are two windows. There's a little bit of annotation, so two uh, the, the room names, and then there's a pond or a lake or something next to it. So we're going to uh, draw something that looks like this by the time we've finished using the very simple tools that we've looked at today. So we're going to start by going over to our draw uh, palette. And as I said previously, always use polyline because it has more, uh, it, it, it's more functional uh, and, and avoid using line uh, generally. So we're either going to click on polyline to start. Or if I press escape, we can just type in PL, hit enter. That's our polyline. And now in order to start using polyline, we click, push the cursor in the direction that we want and type in a dimension. So this building is going to be three meters by three meters. So three, zero, 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 enter. And now the tool is still active, so we can push it down and type in three, zero, 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 enter. So that's 3000 millimeters by 3000 millimeters. Now that we've drawn that, we could type in 3000 and hit enter again and then the final line 3000 hit and hit enter. But I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to show you how the polar tracking can help us finish shapes. If we hover over an endpoint, and if you hover over long enough, the word endpoint will appear. Now when we slowly pull away from it and try and keep the cursor roughly in the right um, uh, line, you can see that there's a guide that has appeared, which can help us complete the shape. Hit enter. So that is how a, um, a polar tracking uh, guide can help us. It would also be really helpful. I'm just going to draw over this. P L enter. We start drawing from the point where we were before. And if we hover over the middle point, the triangle will appear. The word midpoint appears, and as soon as the word midpoint appears, you can see the guide is there again. So you can use this, especially when your your um, uh, drawings start to become more complex. This function might be quite helpful. I'm going to press escape because we don't want to draw anymore. So you can see that we have our 3,000 by 3,000 by 3,000 by 3,000 square. That's a three meter by three meter building on plan. I'm going to zoom in and out using my scroll. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to 
create the external walls and we're going to do that by using the offset tool so we can go over we can either type in offset and it will work so offset enter and it's asking us to specify the distance or I'm going to press escape and we can just click offset so either of those is possible so it says specify offset distance. Now, as I said before, the, the, the general dimension of an external wall is 30 centimeters or 300 millimeters. So I'm going to type in 300 and hit enter. And now it's telling us to select the object to off center. So if we go over, offset, sorry, hover over it, click, and you can see we can either offset internally by moving the cursor inside the shape or externally by moving the cursor outside the shape. So I'm going to move the cursor inside the shape and click. And there you go. We have offset our 3000 by 3000 uh, square. And now we've created an external wall. So on our building, this is inside and this is outside. I'm going to press escape because I want to stop using the offset tool. If I'd have hit enter, the offset tool would have um, uh, started uh, being active again. So now that we've created our external wall, I want to create an internal wall and I want it to be perfectly centered. So I'm going to go over to my polyline tool. So, or I could have typed in PL and hit enter. It's saying that we need to specify the start point of the line. So that's just where you want to start drawing the line. I'm going to use the snaps that I've set up down here to snap to the perfect center of our space. As soon as the green triangle appears, that means that um, my line is snapping to the perfect center of the um, space that we've drawn. I'm going to click and then I'm going to pull my line over and it should snap to the center of this side. Click. And again, in order to stop using the line tool, hit enter. So now that I've drawn a line, you can see it's paper thin. So just like external walls have a thickness, internal walls have a thickness. My internal wall is going to be 100 millimeters thick, which is a, uh, generally a, a good guide for an internal wall. So I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with this external shape. I'm gonna create this line as we have and offset it. So go back over to offset, click. Now it says specify offset distance. So that will always appear when we select offset. I'm going to type in 100 because I want a, sorry, 50 because I want a 100 millimeter thick wall. And I'm going to do hit enter and I'm going to put 50 on this side. 50, click, move down, click again. 50 on this side. And that means that we have our 100 millimeter thick wall when you combine the two 50s. So I'll just do that again. I'll select these two and delete. So because I have the center line and I know that I want my wall to be 100 millimeters thick, I can divide that by two and add 50 this side and 50 this side and know that it totals 100. So I'm going to go over to offset, click, Specify the offset distance as 50 millimeters, so five zero, and hit enter, and then move over to the line, click on it, push it one way in order to offset 50, and then click on it again, push it the other way to offset another 50. And now I've hit enter to stop using the tool. Now that this line has done its job, I can delete it. So that now we have a 30 centimeter external wall and a 10 centimeter internal wall. So 300 millimeters external, 300, uh, 100 millimeters internal. And as architects, we always use millimeters in, in general, unless the dimension gets way too big for us to be able to use millimeters effectively. Now you can see there's a really annoying line there and there, which is ruining my plan. So the next thing that I'm going to do is use the trim tool. Here it is, trim. And it's telling me to select the object 
objects. So this is these are the objects that I want to do the cutting. I want to do that and I want to do that because I want to cut the line here and here. As soon as I've selected that, enter. And now you can see if I hover over the lines that I want to trim, click and click and hit enter to stop using it, I've deleted those lines. I'm just going to press Control Z to go back because there is another way of using the trim tool, which is if you type in TR and hit enter and then just hit enter again, so that's two enters, you can delete any line wherever you want as long as it is trimmable. Um, so that is TR, enter, enter, and that just makes uh, trimming uh, generally a bit easier. So we have an external line, an external wall, and we have an internal wall. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a doorway. I'm going to do that by using the polyline tool again. So we need to create the lines for the doorway. P, L, enter. You can see the line snaps to my corner, which is brilliant. That's why we use AutoCAD, because it's nice and accurate. And I'm going to bring the line over and it should snap perpendicular, click then hit enter in order to stop using that line. So I've just created this little line here, which is the one edge of my doorway. I'll press escape to stop selecting it. Now I'm going to copy in order to create the second side of the doorway. So I'm going to select the line and I use the left to right. So only the thing that was completely within the box was covered, was selected here. Now that I've selected the thing that I want to modify, that I want to copy, I can either go over and type copy, uh, click on copy, or I can type in CO and hit enter. And now it's telling me to specify the base point, which just means the, the, the point at which you want to start copying from. And then I'm going to move it, I've clicked and I'm going to move it in the direction and my doorway is going to be 800 millimeters wide, so I can type in eight zero zero and hit enter and I'm just going to escape so I've got my doorway and again in order to create the doorway I want to trim this line and this line so that it looks nice and neat so I'm going to press TR enter enter that's my quick trim and then I hit enter again to finish using that tool so you can see now we've got an external wall We've got an internal wall. I'm going to need to create one more doorway to get from this room to this room. And then I'll create a couple of windows. Um, and then uh, we'll look at drawing a little pond next to it. So it's the same tool as always, but I'm going to show you a different way of, of, uh, of using it. It's the same tools. PL, enter for polyline. And this time I want the doorway to be perfectly in the middle of this wall. So I'm going to use my snap, which goes right to the middle, click, and then click to the other side of the middle, and then hit enter to stop using it. So now this is the center line of my door. My door is going to be 80 centimeters again. So I'm going to select the line, and then go over to the mirror tool. So I've done that wrong. So I'm going to select the line, and the first thing that I'm going to do is copy. So C O enter, and then I'm going to click and move, and I'm going to type in 400, and that's because that's half the doorway, and hit enter. And now that I've got this side, I could either copy this 400, or I can select that, select the mirror tool use this guideline as the center and you can see you can select you can do it in any direction but if I do it vertically and hit enter I don't want to erase the source so no you can see that I have used this to get the guide for the middle so I know this is perfectly middle uh, in the middle of the wall and then I've drawn this line 40 centimeters away from the middle and then I've copied it, so it's 40 centimeters from the middle again. That means that I, this is where the doorway is going to be. 
we can now select and delete the guideline that was helpful for us before but is no longer no longer necessary and then I'm going to trim again so we could either do the TR enter enter and that's our quick trim or press escape we can hover the trim button here select the cutting objects which is these two little things they're the things that are going to cut these lines and then hit enter and then trim and trim by clicking you can see how the quick trim which is tr enter enter is a bit quicker and a bit easier to use so we've got a doorway in we've got a doorway through and now we're just going to draw two more windows pl enter and this window is also going to be central so i'm going to draw this line and hit enter that's my guide so i know that that line is perfectly in the middle i'm going to click it so I've selected the object that I want to modify and then I'm going to tell AutoCAD to copy. So I'm going to go here, click the copy. I'm going to move it in the direction I want it to go in. And this window is going to be one meter wide. So this half is going to be 500 millimeters. Enter. And then click it again. Copy. Come over. Click move another 500, enter, and then escape. And you can see that this window, this edge, and this edge, it's a one meter wide window and it's perfectly central. So again, I can delete the guide and then I can TR, enter, enter, trim and trim. So now we've got a doorway, we've got a door, we've got a window. But it's difficult to be able to see that this is a window as opposed to a door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw either line or polyline. Stick with polyline because it's the one that we should always use. Do it again. Polyline. Hover over and it snaps, which is really helpful. Push it in the direction and it should snap to this edge. Click. And there you go. So this is a door, this is a door, and this is a window. And then we're going to draw one more window here. So again, PL, enter, enter. Sorry, PL, enter. When we clicked enter twice, it started drawing from the last point that we drew, which is helpful sometimes, but not for this occasion. Click, push it in the direction I want it to go in. And when it snaps, click again, hit enter. And then I want this window to be one meter wide as well. So I'm going to select that. We don't have to draw a center line at this point because we don't want the window centered in a wall. This time I want the window to be perfectly in line with this wall. So I'm going to select the first edge. So I've told AutoCAD what I want to modify and now I'm going to tell it how I want it modified, which in this occasion is copying. So C, O, Enter. And then I can click my line, move it in the direction and I want it to be I want it to be one meter. So that's one, zero, 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 enter. And then I'm going to press escape. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to trim, which is T R enter, enter. Delete that, delete that, hit enter to stop using the trim tool. And then I'm just going to do P L enter just to draw the final tools. And like I said a few times, if the last tool that we used was polyline, if we press enter again, you just start using the polyline tool just begins working again. So it can be, that's quite a nice shortcut sometimes to make drawing quicker, press escape. So we have a very small building, it's got a doorway, it's got an internal doorway. It's got two windows. I'm going to use the zoom to go out a little bit and to be able to see the area of the screen that I want next. We're going to use a spline tool, which is here, which is a squiggly line. And we're going to use the text tool. And that's it for today. So the first thing is spline. I'm going to click on it. And you'll see that if you just start 
clicking, what this tool does is, and I've just I've zoomed whilst I'm drawing, so you can zoom in and out whenever you want, even in, when you're in the middle of using a tool. This tool, when you've got the drawing as you like it, press hit enter. This tool can create free form shapes. So I've created a kind of kidney shape uh, pool there, but you could create any shape you want and it can go over, it can do whatever it wants. But I'm going to select that and delete it because this is how I want my uh, uh, pool to look. One final thing that it's worth mentioning about lines and splines and shapes is that when you click on something here, all of these little squares are the points at which I clicked. So these are nodes, N-O-D-E-S. If we hover over any of them, some options appear. So it says stretch fit point, add fit point or remove fit point. So if we stretch it, click on stretch, we can move it. If we hover over another one and add, we can add another point. And if we hover over it again and remove, we can remove the point. I'm going to press escape to stop highlighting this shape. I'm going to zoom over here and I'm going to show you, I'm going to click on this corner. You can see if you hover over a corner or a center point, the same thing happens. So you can add a vertex. This time it's called a vertex instead of a fit point, but it's exactly the same thing. So you can add a line. You press Control Z to, to remove that. If I hover over the same thing, you can convert it to an arc. So if I want a curved wall there, I can do that. Again, Control Z to stop it. If you hover over an end point, you can remove it. So Control Z to stop doing that. And if you hover over either an end point, you can add a, um, a, a vertex or a point, or you can do that you hover over the middle like we said before. Now the final tool that we're going to use today because this lesson has gone maybe double the length that I thought it should, uh, I'll try and keep the other lessons a little bit shorter, um, is the text tool. So if we click on text, the first thing to do is to specify the zone that you want to write the text in. So I've specified there. And now there are, this box appears, so you can choose the typeface. Now this, this depends upon what type you have on your computer. So I'm going to choose Arial because it was the one that was already there. Now the, this number is the size of the font. Now I know from memory that 50 is the size font that I want. 0.2 would be tiny. So I think I've remembered that wrong. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to start that again. Click on the type tool here. Start by drawing the box. And then I'm going to type in bedroom. So B E D R R. Now you can see I've typed it, but it is tiny. That's because the typeface is way too small. So if I highlight it by scrolling the whole thing, maybe I need to turn it into a number five. Um, Control Z. Yeah, if I highlight this number and type in five, let's see how big that is. It's still way too small. So 50 was correct. So if we click on it again, double click to open the text, hold down and highlight the text. 
and then come up into this box and type in this. Turn it again. And double click, highlight, and then make sure that I'm typing in here five zero and hit enter. Making a bit of an error of this one, but there you go. I've finally got the writing to be the right size. I'm going to do that again because that was, uh, I don't think that was easy for anybody to understand what I just did because I pressed the wrong thing a couple of times. So I'm going to click on text. And the first thing that I need to do when I click on the text is create the text box. So I click one end and then the other. And then the first thing I'm going to do this time is type in five zero, which is the size of the text. And then I'm going to type in entrance. And for some reason, it looks huge. But then if you type in the word and then click when you've finished, it's the right size. If I click on it, double click on it to open it and highlight it, you can change the justification so you can move it around. You can change the typeface so I could make it, uh, let's make it Helvetica. Very similar, but you can modify this like any other object. So if you click the word and then M for move, you can move it. You can select it like any other object. So if you select that and that, you hit M, enter. You can move it. And then finally, if we want to zoom to see everything we've drawn again, we can either use our scroll or you can type zoom, enter, E, enter, and it's E for extents. And that is how we can see everything that we've drawn today. So that's it for today. That is basic draw tools, basic modify tools, something about properties, but we'll look at that far in far more detail in lesson three. Something about uh, the uh, guides at the bottom, polar tracking and snaps, and then using all of the tools in order to create a very simple plan. So in other weeks, if we have a look at this very quickly, you'll see that um, next week we'll, we'll do a recap of the basic tools and then we'll look at using all of the tools that we'll use on a, on a daily basis. So stretching, filleting, which is creating a curved corner, um, scaling something so that we can make it bigger and smaller uh, to a measurable, uh, knowable size and hatching, which is where we create infills uh, within a wall. Um, and then the week after, we'll look at layers, line weights, and how to print a drawing, which is obviously all very important. And then we'll finish AutoCAD with uh, looking at how we can use Digimap with AutoCAD, which will um, hopefully be very useful. So I would recommend reading as much as you can about AutoCAD. Um, YouTube is a very good um, uh, resource for uh, AutoCAD tutorials. If there's anything that I've touched upon very quickly, but you would like any more um, information, then I would recommend uh, Googling and YouTubing um, videos on how to do certain things. Um, I hope that if you're able to um, uh, either watch this video on one screen or on your phone and then um, uh, try and do it uh, alongside the, the tutorials, um, that will be quite helpful. Um, but if after the end of this lesson you're still struggling to do the, um, the actions that we have done today, then don't worry and don't feel bad. Um, this takes a long time to get used to. Um, you'll see that uh, there are a couple of times, particularly with this little font typeface, um, I was clicking the wrong thing in the wrong order and it was um, making it more difficult for me. 
uh, but you'll also remember that typing PL enter and then clicking in the right order and then clicking enter again to stop. Um, all of these little uh, orders and actions, um, uh, they need to become second nature. You need to um, be confident that you know what is going to happen when you click a line or when you hit enter um, or when you hit a shortcut. And the only way of doing that is through practice. So I would recommend for um, next week practicing um, the, the actions that we have um, gone through today and the tools that we've gone through today. Um, you should be getting a uh, case study uh, building or an example building from your studio tutors to draw up. Um, it's good to have that drawing with you as early as possible. So if your studio tutors haven't given you a precedent project or a precedent drawing uh, that they want you to draw in CAD, then ask them to do that. But I would say that you won't be able to do that fully until after lesson four. So after we have gone through the basic tools, after we have learned how to print, um, and maybe after having looked at Digimap. So um, get the case study drawings now, but um, don't expect to be able to draw that fully until at least lesson three or four. I will be available for a QA and a um, later this afternoon. So um, you should be watching this on Tuesday morning and then I will be um, uh, available uh, for a Q&A session. So if there's anything that you don't quite understand or that you have questions on, then I'll be, I'll be available to answer those questions every Tuesday afternoon. Um, check WebLearn and, and, and emails to, to, to see what time uh, and what, um, uh, what piece of software that will be on. The final thing to say is that um, we're going to use this drawing again. Um, so next week when we uh, look at using all of the additional tools, stretch, scale, um, we hatch um, the, the, the thing that we've drawn this week, um, it would be best to be able to use the drawing that we've already done. So if I just delete um, this uh, line that I've drawn, um, the way that we can save the drawing and make sure that it's usable for next week is relatively simple. Um, if we go up to file, save and you can put that anywhere um, I would suggest just like I have creating a folder for digi and you can call this lesson one um, AutoCAD and then save and it means that next week we'll be able to open up this drawing and continue using it.